Okay, so welcome to Java Break and Continue. Java Break and Continue are both statements that pause and resume loops regardless of whether it is a for or a while loop. So in the last two videos, it's been a while, but if you don't remember, they were both on for and while loops. Might as well check them out if you're rusty and forgot. Um, this video is the final video in the Java playlist because it's the end of all the basics that you need to know for Java. However, this isn't the end of Java on the channel. After this, we start into something called methods, which makes Java more interesting. Um, a lot of schools have already been teaching Java, starting with CS1 in high schools. So if you already if you already been taking that class or you plan on taking that class, that is great because that really does help you learn a lot more Java. However, if you're not taking that class, this channel will pretty much cover everything you learn in that class. Um, all the videos on the Java playlist are basically what you learn in CS1, which is Computer Science 1, which is where you first learn Java. So take a look at this whole playlist at the end of all the basics of Java. So let's go ahead and get started with first something called a break. So we can use a break statement to pretty much force quit a loop. This means that we can make it stop at a certain number. So what, what I'm going to do is first you want to create a file, which I already did. I called it u.java. So then I want to set up my syntax. So I'm going to do public class u, and then I'm going to do a public, and then a static, and then a void. I'm going to do a main, do a string, and then I'm doing args. And then after that, we're going to do a for loop. If you don't remember, for loops have three parameters. The first parameter is its starting value. The next parameter is where it stops. And the next parameter is how much you want to increase it by. After that, the next thing you want to do is you want to tell what you want the loop to do. So what I'm going to do is when i is 3, I'm going to have the loop break. That means it's going to pause once the number hits 3. So anything less than 3 will show. So anything from 0 to 3 will pretty much show since my starting value I've shown up here is 0. And I'm saying when it hits 3, we're going to have the loop just stop. Once it hits three, that means you're only going to see zero, one, and two. You're not going to see three because we're stopping once we, once the number hits three. So we're going to end this. We're going to end that. Let's do, let's, let's let it print the loop. We always have to make sure you print the loop. The reason why the loop doesn't show is obviously because you haven't put a print statement. So make sure you're doing your print statements. So with that, let's go ahead and compile it and see how it goes. So let's, um, where is it? Okay, there it is. There we go, there we go, and there we go. And there you can see right there, you'll see a zero, one, two. This was from a, this was from my previous footage take. So that's just, that, that's not part of it. You only see zero, one, two. You won't see it twice. I just need to clear the terminal, which I should do. But you'll see zero, one, two, because we started with zero. If you look back in our code, you see that um, we started with zero and we said once we hit three, if i is three, we're starting i with zero. So once it hits three, we're going to make it stop. So that means it's only going to show zero, one, and two. So like I said, in this code, you can basically see how the loop force quits or stops at two because if i is three, we're telling the loop to break or stop there. So three won't be displayed. Hope that makes sense. Next, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a continue statement. What, this, what the continue statement does is it resumes the loop after where it stopped. In the example, the loop stopped at number 2. From there, it's going to increment by 2 until it hits 10. Once the number is less than 10, the loop will stop. Keep in mind, the last condition I put for the loop is i equals i plus 2. This makes it increment by 2 instead of 1. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to make it... I'm going to make my last condition i equals i plus 2, like I was going to, like I was going to say. And that way, it's going to increment it by 2 instead of 1. So then what I'm going to say is if i equals 3, then I'm going to have the loop continue. And then I'm going to end it right there, and then I'm going to compile my code. And I'm going to explain this when you, when you see the result. You'll see, and it'll make a lot more sense. There we go. So you see 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So we go back to our code again. You see 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So first we're saying we want i, we want our starting value to be 0, and we want our ending value to be a number less than 10. So our starting value is 0, our ending value is at 8, because we're counting by 2s. So it's 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. We're having the loop resume after where it broke. So it's going to be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and we're having it end at anything. At, when i is less than 10, then the loop will stop 
according to our second parameter here. And our third parameter obviously says it counts, it goes counting by two. And I should probably do an ln there so that it displays on the next line instead of instead of it just showing on the same line. There we go. There we go. Now you can see it. 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So like I said, in the examples above, I used breaking to continue for for loops. However, you can apply them into while loops as well. If you want to see how break and continue statements work in while loops, I'll probably post something later in the comments, probably a couple days after I edit this. Um, and then I'll put the link to that to see to show you how it will work with the while loop. But it's basically the same thing. If you know how to do while loops, you just have to implement this into that. So yeah, with that being said, that's it with break and continue. Break just basically pauses it. It just force quits the loop at a certain number that you put at the beginning with your um, with your it's to if statement. Continue just resumes the loop after it's been broken. And that's it. That's Java break and continue statements. I'll see you all next time.